mobile phones. Everyone's got one, but I suggest you get three. Just in case one decides to blow up and the other one doesn't have an earphone jack, you at least have one that's reliable. Who knows, it might take a bullet for you. Now that Samsung has decided to kill off the Note 7, the prediction is that it will see almost 10 billion in lost sales and 5.1 billion dent in profit. And that's not even including how much bad press is going to hurt them overall. Not only that, if Samsung crashes, South Korea should be very, very concerned because it contributes 23% to the nation's GDP. Pause. Let's rewind the timeline and see how on earth Samsung got into this mess. August 19th, Samsung officially began selling the Note 7. The product wasn't quite ready, but because they knew Apple's iPhone 7 was coming out on September 7, Samsung rushed it. A week later, the phones started catching fire and then came the first global recall. And the rest is history. Now, just when you thought, maybe it's time to learn how to declutter and get used to just one button, Apple decided to take minimalism to a whole new level, leading to people following unfortunate tutorials like this one. Without earphone jacks, you might have to spend over 150 USD to buy an AirPod on top of paying for an iPhone 7. But big deal, every company wants to roll out new products to sell. Besides, no hole, I guess is great for water resistance. Here's the thing, it doesn't cost Apple anything to drop that earphone jack. But this might get iPhone fans to ditch their regular headphones and get those that uses Lightning or Bluetooth. Now, because Apple created the Lightning port, this means it will get a cut from any third-party accessories makers. As for Bluetooth, guess who owns the number one Bluetooth headphone company? So basically, fancy products we spend our hard-earned money on today are less about giving us what we want and solving our problems, and more about the company's forever-growing appetite for profits. I mean, look, you're probably still using an old home appliance your parents bought like, what, 20 years ago? old air conditioner, that FM radio with three extension antenna. It's a little wonky, but it's okay. Oh, and the foot pedal sewing machine. They all still work. But mobile phones are one of those things that come and go really quickly. Either they died for some reason, the screen got shattered, or you accidentally dropped them while sitting on the throne. I won't judge you, though I do think newspaper is a safer option. Anyway. Shouldn't we expect longer product lifespan as we experience technological advancement? Apple and Samsung's tactics are just the tip of an iceberg of inducing what we call conspicuous consumerism. It's hard not to conform, because there's always a legit reason to get a new one. Like your machine becomes obsolete when there's a software update, or repairing a device costs just as much as getting a new one, or maybe you're just a fanboy. A big part of that is due to a deliberate shortening of product lifespan by manufacturers, just so consumer demand never lets up. But there are other issues too. According to US NGO Consumer Reports, a 2013 survey showed that 31% of the side-by-side -side refrigerator broke down within four years, 22% of front-loading washing machines, and 20% of dishwashers failed. The rate of appliances failing in 2013 is higher than in 2010. Repair expert says the reason is that gadgets are just too complicated. I want a fridge to keep my food fresh. I want energy saving, moisture control, an LED screen to check my Facebook while grabbing ice. Oh, and it has to help me buy groceries. You see, an extra nice to have feature adds another circuit to the machine. And each time you run electricity through a circuit, it creates heat and increases the likelihood of failing. Okay, so if the TV on my fridge breaks down, do I send it to the fridge repair guy or the TV repair guy? Well, if you're rich enough to change new gadgets so often, you probably have a dedicated drawer for the old ones to uh, retire. But where do they ultimately go to die? Yep, Africa. Take a look. Workers, both adults and children, sift through the ashes for scraps of metal. The overwhelming amount of e-waste is polluting the environment. It's a problem that feels too big to solve on an individual level. Maybe that's why the idea of simple living is catching on, largely made popular by the Japanese, like the KonMari decluttering method and minimalist lifestyle. 
Science has established a link between high density of household objects to depression and not to mention lots of guilt. So, what are we waiting for? Time to end our guilt and start living with just four outfits and a set of cutleries. And may maybe a Note 8 later on? No? I've been a good girl, just saying. <laughs>